Dear learners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today I am going to continue my discussion on Psychology, Understanding Self and Others, Part 2. The objectives of this program are to make you aware about the major psychological perspectives and the relationship of psychology with other disciplines. Before we start discussing about the major psychological perspectives, let me explain to you what do we mean when I say the major psychological perspectives. Say for example, the disease of a person can be studied from the point of view of Ayurveda, from the point of view of allopathic medicines or from the point of view of homeopathic. That means headache can be studied from different points of views. Likewise, in order to understand the human behavior, we have different psychological perspectives. While studying human behavior, we need to remember that changes are observed in individuals due to maturation, learning and aging. Human behavior at any moment is a joint function of the personal characteristics and the properties of the environment. That means the personality of the individual in relation to his environment affects the human behavior at any point of time. For example, how do we live, where do we live, what kind of people we are surrounded with all affect the human behavior of an individual at a particular time and place. The measurement of psychological attributes, for example, personality, intelligence, interest, attitude is usually indirect and based on inferences, which means that like weight, you cannot weigh the intelligence of a person, the personality of a person or the interest or attitude of an individual. You have to make inferences on the basis of indirect measurement. How do we do it? Let us discuss. Many aspects of social behavior are rule governed and culture specific. Human behavior is usually determined by multiple causes. For example, we have to study the human behavior in groups, in isolation or in relation to the environment. Let us discuss about the first perspective of psychology. It is called the biological perspectives, which means that by knowing the biology of an individual's mind, how do we try to understand the behavior of the individual? It looks at the internal physiological structures, for example, the brain, nervous system, the working of the nervous system and the role of genetic factors in shaping behavior become major concerns. It is held that all social and psychological processes are derived from biological processes. It is brain. You can see this picture. This means that while studying the human behavior from the biological point of view, one has to consider the functioning of the nervous system that how the nervous system is working and how it affects the behavior of an individual. And we have already discussed that it takes into account the genetic factors, which means that what you have brought from your genes. Let us discuss about the behavioral perspective of psychology. This perspective stresses on the role of environmental stimuli in determining the way people act. The overt or observable behavior becomes the subject matter of psychology. In this tradition, observable behavior and its relationship with environmental conditions is the main focus of the study. Its proponent Watson and exponent B.F. Skinner believed in the objective study of behavior. Now, when I am discussing or when I am talking about the objective study of behavior, for example, in this picture, the rat learned to acquire the behavior of pressing a lever when he was given the positive reinforcement in the form of food pellets. If you want to understand the Skinner box example from day to day life, I will give you one instance. For example, you want your child to acquire habits of respecting elders. In order for this habit formation to be acquired by your child, you will give him positive reinforcement every time when he respects elder. 
and when he disrespect elders you will give him negative reinforcements maybe in the form of uh, scolding so this is how we learn to acquire positive or negative behaviors from the environment around us another perspective is known as psychodynamic perspective sigmund freud the founder of psychoanalysis it believes that each behavior has a cause and that cause is to be found in the mind it is held that much of our behavior is governed by the unconscious processes that lie outside the range of our awareness for example this view considers early childhood experiences as determinants of adult behavior freud comes with this image of mind if you look at this image of mind you will see that the mind is divided into the conscious subconscious and unconscious the conscious part is known as what we know at present for example what is your name what do you do that is you are conscious of the subconscious mind is that part of your mind from which the information can be retrieved by giving little pressure to the mind for example if i ask you when you were 6 years old who was your best friend then you might put little effort on your mind and you would retrieve the information about your best friend from the subconscious mind the major part of the mind according to freud was covered by unconscious part of the mind the unconscious part of the mind contains all those desires or the happenings or the painful events of our lives that we suppress in this part of the mind we never get to know on our own that what are those events or what are those happenings that are today influencing our behavior but in order to know what happened in the past and how it is affecting our present we need to go for psychoanalysis treatment the next perspective is known as the cognitive perspective the main focus of this view is on how people know understand and think about the world much of our behavior involves mental or cognitive processes such as perceiving remembering and thinking the cognitive perspective works on the computer model like in the computer we put in some information it is processed and the output is obtained likewise in the mind we put in some information in the form of input it is processed by the mind and then we get an output in the form of our behavior they are as important as environmental stimuli in understanding our behavior they function in organized and systematic way this perspective has links with the emerging fields of cognitive science and artificial intelligence here we can see that how this is related with artificial intelligence or the advancement in uh, neuroscience which is known also known as brain science in the linguistics and the philosophy the next view is known as humanistic perspective for understanding human behavior when we talk about humanistic perspective this perspective views humans as basically good and responsible beings which means that we are good enough or we have inborn qualities to perform better in our life and to be responsible in our lives once behavior is not simply determined by either past experiences or the current circumstances humanistic view believes that the humans have their capacity to solve their problems on their own they do not need any help people can make choices and the emphasis is on free will free will means what you want to acquire or whatever is your wish you can do and you are the best judge to take decision for your own life in this perspective self actualization and spirituality play important role it tries to see the pattern in life histories of the people that what was the pattern in the lives of an individual and how that pattern can influence the individual's behavior now let us try to understand 
psychology from the Indian perspective. Whenever we talk about the Indian perspective, we need to know we are a collectivist culture, which means that we believe in living together. The Indian thought system has discussed the problem of human life from a broader perspective. A human being is embedded in relationships with the environment and divinity and harmony of mind, body and soul is emphasized in India. People are attracted to objects of desire unmindfully that creates problems. People are ignorant of their true nature. Indian perspective, this picture depicts that what is our culture and this also is depicting how that culture influences our behavior. The difficulties in life are because we are not aware of the potentialities and misidentify with physical objects. The remedy is proposed in terms of various forms of yoga like bhakti, gyan, karm and raj yogas, which is a way of understanding oneself. Now these were different perspectives of studying human behavior. Now let us come to another point of discussion which is relationship of psychology with other disciplines. Dear learners, we should know that the nature of psychology is such that it is related to various disciplines. Let us see how it is related to sociology. Both the disciplines help us to understand the influence of social context on human behavior. As you all know, sociology focuses on the broader or macro units which is what is family, what is society and it stresses on the study of groups and communities while psychology focuses more on the individuals. So because individuals are a part of communities or groups that is how sociology and psychology can be seen interrelated. It is interesting to note that society comprises of individual. Hence both are interrelated as we have already discussed. It also used experimental survey and observational methods for collecting information. And psychology also does so in collecting information about human mind. In this picture, we can see a group of people. The person who is from the background of sociology would try to understand this group. Whereas the psychologist would try to understand each individual and its behavior in the group, which is one or the other way they are trying to understand the behavior of the group or the people in the society. Next is anthropology. Anthropology tries to understand the evolution of mankind and development of civilization that how mankind was developing and how the different civilization developed over time. It also focuses on the characteristics and processes of culture which is how the different characteristics of different culture and different processes that are embedded in those culture are influencing the people around. So this is maybe a picture of a woman that uh, uh, how her culture is influencing her behavior or her life. So psychology is related to anthropology in the sense that psychology tries to establish generalizations about human behavior. And these generalizations are often limited by the culture in which research is conducted, which means that we can make generalization only when we study a particular culture and culture is basically studied or in the broader sense studied by the anthropologists. The psychological studies which respond to the needs of culture have shown that there are important differences and similarities in the nature and expression of emotions, self-concept, motives, personality, norms, morality and child rearing across different cultures. This is a picture that depicts that what is the culture of India and uh, how does this culture affects the behavior of uh, people around India. Now let us try to understand the relationship of psychology with education. 
we all know that the theory and practice of education is based on the principles and findings about various psychological processes like learning, memory, motivation, personality and intelligence. Which means that how this learning, memory, personality and intelligence affects the behavior of a learner. Children are active learners who process information and act accordingly. A teacher therefore is required to be skillful in techniques of motivation and communication which is the area of education only that how to train a teacher so that he or she knows how to skillfully use the techniques of motivation and communication. Teachers are often required to provide guidance and counseling to students and parents. Similarly, evaluation of students requires basic understanding of the principles and procedures of psychological assessment. For example, how the teacher behaves with the learner affects the learning. Now, how is psychology related to biology and neuroscience? One of the main concerns of psychologists is to understand the biological foundations of behavior which means that the biology of mind is very much related to or the biology of the mind determines the human functioning. Many breakthroughs in understanding, controlling and modifying behavior have come from the knowledge of the functioning of brain and nervous system. Localization of brain functions, nature and properties of nerve impulse, biological factors in arousal and motivation. When I talk about localization of brain functions, this means that what particular area of brain is related to which function, which means that say for example, there is an area in the brain which is related to your comprehension capacity. One area of the brain is related to your reading capacity. Likewise, localization means how do we localize different areas in the brain that determines the specific area to determine your specific behavior. Role of various parts of brain in determining psychological functioning constitute an exciting area of inquiry. Dear learners, this was all for today's discussion where we discussed that what are the major psychological perspectives and how psychology is related to different fields. Thank you.